Now I'm going to show you how to put together a simple and inexpensive preamp to clean up the sound. It'll have a very high input impedance to work well with your guitar, and it'll buffer out that 2.8 volts from the audio signal. Now I want to keep the project component count low so that we can fit the whole circuit right inside the jack without requiring a separate project box or enclosure. So I'm going to just use a single JFET transistor and a few resistors and diodes, but I'm going to forego the use of coupling caps, ferrite beads, and the other filtering circuitry that you typically find in preamps like the amplitude by rig. But trust me, it'll work fine without them. Next I'm going to show you a little bit about how JFETs work and the theory behind them. Then we'll work up a schematic and prototype it on breadboard and listen to how it sounds. Last I'm going to show you how to put it all together and cram it inside the jack. As always, you can find more information and links to other resources and materials at my blog at Planet Z. A JFET, or Junction Field Effect Transistor, is a small, low-powered device commonly used in preamps and guitar boost pedals because it provides a very high impedance input at the gate and has a nice tube-like warmth when overdriven. There's a number of different JFETs available. These are just a few common N-channel type JFETs. They all have slight differences, even two parts with the same model number sometimes, so you just got to check the data sheets and maybe do some measurements. I'm going to go ahead and use the MPF-102 here because it's very commonly available and it has a pretty forgiving wide operating range. I'm going to diagram a JFET so that we can visualize how it works. The JFET is essentially a variable resistor that can pass current through its channel, but the resistance can change based on a voltage at its gate. This is very similar to a bipolar junction transistor, except that instead of being current controlled at the base, this is voltage controlled at the gate. Now I'm drawing an N-channel JFET, which means that the channel is made up of N-type silicon, that is silicon that's been doped with something like phosphorus to make it more negative. And I'm drawing that in this green speckly material here. And then the strip that runs around the outside, the gate, is made up of p-type silicon, or silicon that's been doped with something like boron to make it positively charged. Now just like a bipolar junction transistor, the JFET has three pins. Here they're called the gate, source, and drain, which correspond with the BJT's base, emitter, and collector. Electrons flow in through the source and out through the drain. Now, since I'm drawing an N-channel JFET, I'm going to label the gate as P-type and the channel as N-type material. If this was a P-channel JFET, those would just be reversed. Now, with nothing connected and no voltage at the gate, the JFET's channel will conduct a current very easily. So if we were to hook up a battery like this between the source and the drain, with the negative terminal of the battery connected to the source, electrons will flow out of the negative terminal of the battery into the source, through the channel, and out through the drain again. Of course, if we don't restrict the amount of current flowing through the circuit, as soon as we hook up that battery, it's just going to kill the JFET with the giant current spike. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a load resistor here that basically just narrows the path through which the electrons can flow, reducing the amount of current. Now if we connect a voltage at the gate that is negatively biased relative to the source, and by that I simply mean that there's a lower voltage at the gate than at the source, then an electric field will begin to emanate out of the p-type material at the gate. And this field effectively makes the channel narrower, raising its resistance, allowing fewer electrons to get through, and thereby reducing the current that flows. And this is called the depletion region. And as the gate to source voltage gets more negative, the depletion region grows until a point at which it's said to be pinched off, or very high resistance, and no current will flow. As the voltage at the gate goes up and down, the depletion region changes, allowing a current to flow through that's proportional to the voltage at the gate. Looking at that another way, if you were to hook an audio signal up at the gate, the changing signal will cause a corresponding change in the resistance of the channel, allowing a current to flow through the channel that's proportional to the signal at the gate. And this new signal that's being generated in the channel here is effectively isolated from the current at the gate, so it's a very high impedance input. And the level of this new signal is independent of the input signal too. It can be attenuated or amplified depending on the drain to source voltage. This is the circuit symbol for a JFET. You've got your gate, source, and drain. And the arrow pointing into the symbol indicates an N-channel JFET, whereas an arrow pointing out would indicate a P-channel JFET. Now this is a common source JFET amplifier circuit. You'll find something like this in most JFET preamplifiers. Now the input voltage at the gate is biased with this R1-R2 resistor divider network. 
to maintain a lower voltage at the gate relative to the source voltage. And the source voltage is determined by this drain supply voltage through the drain resistor and the source resistor. This also determines the gain of the amplifier. Now in your iPad, iPhone, or iPod Touch, the voltage source and drain resistor are hidden away inside the device itself. We know that the drain supply voltage we're receiving here is 2.8 volts, but we can't change this drain resistor, and there's no way to put an R1 here since we can't reach the other side of the drain resistor. We know our output is right here at the drain. So that leaves us with the ability just to choose a source resistor and an R2 here to properly bias and set the gain of the circuit. So here now is the beginning of the circuit I'm actually building. I've got the MPF 102 JFET in the center, and my source resistor R2 I've chosen at 1.2k ohms. I essentially picked this by trial and error, not knowing what the drain resistor and other components are up here. Uh, I just basically tried a few resistors around this value until I found one that worked well. R1 is a nice big resistor chosen for high impedance at the gate. I've got the jack here with the tip wired to the gate and the sleeve to ground. And since the gate of a JFET is quite sensitive to static electricity, I'm going to place a couple Zener diodes back to back like this from the gate to ground. I pick a Zener breakdown voltage of five or six volts, which should be well above the maximum voltage you'd ever get out of your guitar, which should be about a volt in the worst case. So any voltage coming in or out of the circuit that exceeds this breakdown voltage will shunt through the Zeners to ground, protecting the gate. So this circuit right here worked great with most of the guitars I tried. Well, one of the guitars had a much hotter output than the others, and with that one I was getting a little bit of distortion. And I found, once again just by trial and error, that adding a 10k resistor here between drain and ground seemed to tweak the bias and the gain just a little bit to get rid of that distortion. Now I've prototyped the circuit on the breadboard of my electronics learning lab here. This is a really great tool for experimenting with circuits without having to solder anything. The breadboard is organized into six sections which are independent from each other and each horizontal row is electrically connected while the vertical rows aren't and the entire bottom row is reserved for ground. You can see I've placed the MPF-102 JFET transistor right here in three vertical holes so those are not connected to each other. The bottom pin here is the gate, the middle is the source and the top is the drain. The drain pin connects out via this red alligator lead to the microphone input of the iPad, and that carries the 2.8 volts DC. The source pin is connected via this adjacent hole through this 1.2k ohm resistor to ground, that's the source resistor, and the gate pin is connected via this white wire over to this adjacent section, just to give me some more room. And that has those pair of zeners to ground for static protection, and the 1 meg ohm resistor to ground to set the impedance. And this red alligator lead right here carries the guitar signal into the top lead of that 1 mega ohm resistor. The optional 10k ohm resistor for biasing for really hot pickups would fit right here between the drain and ground. Now I've got that cable plugged into the headphone jack that goes over to the audio interface on my computer. I'm on the same clean amplitude settings as before. Middle and bridge pickups, volume and tone all the way up. Let's hear how it sounds. As you can see, it's a much cleaner, brighter sound. Let's try the pots now. It's volume working properly. Here's tone. And the switch. All right, much better. Let's take a look at how we can fit all these components inside the jack and solder it together. 